This is the country that has started World War II on the same side as Nazi Germany. In fact, they have signed a treaty with the Nazis, the Soviets that is. Just so there's no confusion, the Soviets have signed a treaty with the Nazis. It's called the Molotov-Rubentrop Treaty, in which they agreed to split Poland in half. Half would go to Hitler, half would go to Stalin. That is what they agreed upon. But now, we keep hearing this rhetoric that supposedly the great Soviet Union was always against the Nazis. Not true. The Soviets were perfectly fine with every single atrocity that the Third Reich was committing against the Jews. Because the Soviets were doing the same exact thing against their own people. The Jews were fleeing the Soviet Union just as much as they were fleeing Nazi Germany. Let's not forget about that, my friends. We have to understand who can help us, who is on our side, who we can trust, and who we cannot. And clearly, right now, the Russian terrorist regime has shown their disdain and their hatred for the West. They have shown that every single one of you, every single person who lives here and contributes to this country is their enemy. And they have shown it many times with no second thoughts. We have seen it many times. When they ride on their missiles to Lviv, to Kiev, and to other Ukrainian cities. But what unfortunately many people in the West have not seen is that many of their missiles, armored vehicles, and tanks have to London, to Washington, to Berlin written on them. Now, of course, we look at that and we laugh. <laughs> to Washington. Oh, you silly Russians. How are you going to get to Washington? Of course they're not going to get to Washington. They're going to get destroyed by the American military they ever tried. But the fact remains that the idea is there. The Russians will keep pushing until something pushes back. They will not stop until they are stopped. That is the only way of dealing with a terrorist regime like Russia. That is the only way we have of finally bringing this war to an end. Not for a week, not for a month, not for a year, but forever. We have to stop the Russian terrorist regime in Ukraine. We have to beat their military in Ukraine. We have to do it for all the heroes of Ukraine, all the Azov-style defenders, all the heroes of Ukraine, the great people who are fighting for democracy and for freedom in the whole world, whose sacrifice, unfortunately, sometimes is not understood by certain ignorant individuals. But alas, we have to keep moving forward. And we have to inform the world about what's going on, so that every person on earth has the truth at their disposal and so that every person on earth can make an informed decision on what they're going to do for the future. And this choice, at least at this moment, at least for now, we all have this power of making this choice. Do we want to live in a free future? Do we want to live unafraid that our next words will land us in jail, getting tortured? or? Do we want to live in a state that will kill, mutilate, and persecute any person who has the minutest disagreement with the state's propaganda? That is the question we all have to ask ourselves. Do we want to live like the Russians, who live in poverty, in oppression, who flee their country so that they're not enlisted in their meat waves to die against the Ukrainian people who are fighting for their survival? Or do we want to live in the West, where we have a good quality of life, where we have a future? The answer, my friends, is obvious. We are all here, after all. We are not in Russia. And if we were speaking with the Russians right now, this is the message that we would like to send them. Act. Act now. Because this war is unwinnable for Russia. We don't stand here because Ukraine is losing. We stand here because Ukraine is losing people. Because there is a large cost 
for this war that Ukraine unfortunately is paying right now. And the sooner we end this war, the less people have to die. But the only way to end this war for good is to help Ukraine win, my friends. And that is why we stand here today and every other day that we spread our message to the whole world so that everybody can make that decision, that decision that the Russian terrorist state is trying to take away from you, that decision that the Russian terrorist regime is trying to convince every single one of you that you do not have, but it's a lie. You do have this decision. And we have this decision. We all do. There is a certain issue that we always have to speak of when we're talking about authoritarian countries. It's the illusion of harmony in the authoritarian states. Why are there no protests in Russia? Why are there no protests in North Korea or Iran? I mean, they used to be in Iran. They used to be in Russia, at least to an extent. And in Iran, there were very large protests. But why no longer? Are the people suddenly happy with what their government is doing? Did the government change their directives? Did the government change their ways? Are the people living better now? No. The people are in jail or in the grave. That is how people live in Russia. That is what we all want to avoid. And for us to be able to avoid it, we need to help the people who are keeping that barbarism at bay, who are keeping the Russian terrorist regime at bay. Ukraine will only be the beginning if Russia is allowed to succeed. After that, it will be Moldova. The Russians already have troops in Moldova, in the region of Transnistria. In fact, they never removed those troops ever since the end, the collapse of the Soviet Union. This Soviet Union, this genocidal country that Putin has been romanticizing so much. Of course, Putin has been saying it over and over again. That according to him, according to Putin, the collapse of the Soviet Union has been the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century. Imagine a German Chancellor saying that the collapse of the Third Reich was a disaster. Imagine that happening. How would that be received by the public? What would the people think of it? Would that person really be allowed to remain in power? Would that person be patted on their back and said, well done? No, my friends, that person would lose their position. They would be out of politics for their whole life. But in Russia, things work in a different way. In Russia, romanticizing and sympathizing with a genocidal regime is normal. In fact, it's good. It's their traditional way. We have to allow them to do as they please. Is that really how we want to look at such genocidal tendencies? at the desire of the Russian terrorist regime to return to the genocide perpetrated by the Soviet Union. No, my friends, that is not the future we should strive for. That is the future we should oppose. And that is the future that we will oppose and we will avoid so that we can live better. Every single one of us, not just the Ukrainian people. And that is what we all have to remind ourselves of. My friends, let's not forget that our rallies happen every single week. Nowadays, there's a small change in the schedule. And uh, pay attention to this for a second, because this is very important. Our rallies are in Wednesday at 6 o'clock, from 6 to 8. But, usually, our rallies used to be on Saturdays. These days, we will change them. We, uh, I believe it's going to be on Fridays, right? It's going to be on Friday, same time, correct? Six. At six o'clock on Fridays. Because of the big protests, of the very large protests happening around this area on Saturdays, we will have to slightly change our schedule in order to still be able to do our protests, my friends. So our rallies will be on Wednesdays at six o'clock, on Fridays also at six o'clock, and on Sundays at three o'clock as we have it today. Please come and show your support you will always be welcome here.